love it. Tom, when you were down the that, That's a dual meet. That's a heavyweight boxing match. Fist fight. And not a fist fight, because you get in trouble for saying that. But it's a fist fight back and forth. 16,000 people, whatever the crowd was, I don't think anybody left. Do you? I don't think anybody left. When you were down 11 to 4, were your feelings then? What did you tell your team during the break? You talk to individuals and wrestle your match. And that's what Kemmer did. That's what Kemmer did. And, and it was a steady, steady onslaught. And it was back and forth for a while, but we stayed on it. We didn't try to win a close match by putting the brakes on it. Will you give it an explanation for the, the team point deduction? Control a mat area. We went after, my, when I say we, Tom and Terry Brands went after the official um, on the DeSanto thing. And we, we got, we're, we're better than that. We have to be better than that. Do you have an update on him? Nope. You got Kemmer, a senior, Cassiope closing it, freshman. Uh, how does that make you feel? You got that depth on all five. Feels great. Spencer Lee, Kemmer, Warner. Warner learned from the Nebraska match when Assad, all that noise in that Nebraska match, and you know, he got caught up in it, got wrapped up in it a little bit. That's how you become a seasoned veteran. That's how you learn to take care of business in here and do what you are here to do, and that's wrestle your match. We grew up a little bit. Cassiope lives for that. I don't think we had to find out if he could handle that. He lives for that. And, um, you know, listen, we got to keep getting better. And the crowd, Kemmer, Spencer Lee, bonus points. I mean, he, he scores five. You know, we're going up to the official the wrong way, and now and then it's down to four. So that's a waste of his skill and talent and overwhelming firepower. We, we need to not give those points away. You talked about getting caught up. Is that maybe what happened to Assad there in that first exchange coming out with that little sack headlock? Or? Uh, caught up. What do you mean, caught up in the moment? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it wasn't there, but I don't think it was there either. Uh, he needs to probably set it up, maybe be a little bit more savvy. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk about Marinelli to Marinelli about, you know, he's take that guy deep into the third period and then do that to him. You know, we don't need to be going over-unders with a guy that makes a living in, in over-unders. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you got to be seasoned. Lugo also. We got to be a little bit. We we can't be hanging there. We gotta we gotta use it. Two hands of leg, quick finish, like Kemmer. We can do that too. But all, all those guys that we're talking about can do that. Paul is not a guy who gives up a lot of takedowns. And yet Kemmer scored two. I think got a reversal. What do you see in Michael this year that maybe you didn't see two years ago when he was at a lighter weight? Uh, we've always seen it in him. Um, he, he we know what he needs to do. He needs to keep wrestling. And that was a back and forth match, and he stayed in there. And he was calm. And you say, what did we say? Well, the last words out of our mouth to him is, wrestle your match. You said in media day at Crow Farm that fans were going to enjoy Cassiope. What did you know after him being here in year? We knew that when we started to lean on him in his training, that the response that he gave us was exactly what is going to get you to where you can win very consistently at the highest level. Now I'm talking about the highest level. I'm talking about Division One. I'm talking about internationally. Um, he he's that way. He's uh, not perfect, um, you know. He, he but he picks up things very well. And sometimes he gets out of his fundamentals. And he won that scramble with fundamentals. He didn't try to roll. He didn't try to kick out. He didn't try an inside switch. He got that leg, that straight leg, and he got it weighed on it, and he got it down on the mat, and he got the guy back on his haunches. And won that scramble after it was his shot. And that guy's really good with that trick knee where he'll bring him down to the, down to the mat there and then do exactly what he did. And we, we got to get better in our finishes too. We got to have that leg straight up in the air. We can't go down on the mat with him. But we'll get better because fundamentally that's his focus. Are you concerned to say those? Serious? I'm not. I don't get too worked up about this stuff until we know a lot more, and that's wh where I'm at now. It was um, a situation where we got to be on the corner, and we hit the hold. We came out right away, hit the hold, 
and that guy got to the corner and he pulled our foot out you can't give the guy that you have to get the corner and you have to be driving in and it's again it goes back to world class and the other thing with DeSanto is is I don't know how much he's been injured like this so I think he probably maybe could have handled that um, a little bit differently um, with you know being a little bit calmer on the mat those types of things because you know at that point hey we're either going to pull you off the mat or you're going to go wrestle but you know one thing is his calmness helps a lot there and I don't know how calm he was I think if we could have got him calmed down a little bit I think he could have got back in that match Cassiope talked about how Spencer Lee went up to DeSanto after the match um, just kind of told him that it's about March it's about going forward what does that say about your team mentality both on the mat and well that doesn't surprise me about Spencer Lee um, he's going to be a great coach administrator whatever he wants to do in his life but the thing is is did you see him during that dual meet did you did everybody see him did everybody see Marinelli I mean that takes Marinelli especially I mean that takes a man and you get beaten that's a big match. I don't think Marinelli's lost in Carver Hawkeye Arena, has he? So that's a big match, and he's down there. And again, it's a good story. Tom, talk about the energy and Cameron's last takedown. Somebody asked Michael if he's heard Carver Hawkeye Arena that loud. Can you speak to that? Have you heard it louder? Oh, uh, you know, I was a freshman watching Brooke Simpson pin Iowa State to keep Gable's undefeated Carver Hawkeye Arena intact. And that was pretty loud then, um, but I would say at least a tie and maybe give the nod to Cameron. I know there's more people here tonight than there were in that dual meet. How does it make you feel as a coach that everyone in the arena is chanting one of your guys' names? You just talk about how much you like to see your guys get the glory. Uh, you glory to God, I guess, but um, yeah, they, uh, they earn it and our fans, Here's the thing, our fans will reward you with applause. They will shower you with applause if you do your job. Uh, they want, they crave, they love entertaining uh, point scoring wrestling. And that's what Kemmer did and that's why it was loud. And it was a big match. Uh, Mark Hall's not a slouch. So, good job Kemmer, let's keep it going. There was a stat put in my ear by Chris Brewer about, uh, he's had four straight top eight matches and won them all. Of course he's won them all, he's undefeated, right? <laughs> hey, Tom, Tom, gotta keep here. getting better though, that's the, that's the message. When Kemmer was in here, he talks about having to see Mark Hall and Penn State again in the Big Tens and Nationals. What do you say to your team at the next practice about you know continuing to move forward in this format? Well, we're moving forward, we're getting on a bus, we're going to Michigan State. And we got to be ready to go. We got Paul Glenn ready to go at 133. And that means we got to change our travel plans and probably bring Nelson Brands now. He was going to sit back because we can only bring 13. So that's where we're at. So I like how you think. We're on to the next thing. We're already on to Michigan State in our head, but we're going to enjoy this also because their families are in town and they get to eat a little bit and take care of their bodies and move forward, like you said. Um, but they. They need to move forward the right way, and that part of that is enjoying this. And and um, 10 o'clock tomorrow or something, they'll be in the room and they'll be working on their routines, getting ready to go. Tom, as you're, trying to, develop, question, as yeah. you're trying to develop a, a national championship team, is this where dual meets really come in big for you to develop a team, a true team in that app? Uh, yeah, but there, it's different. I mean, you wrestle your match. I mean, Kemmer wrestled his match, so that's this is a dual meet atmosphere, and it's dual meet points and this and that, but. You know, Kemmer, he wrestled a, a tournament-like match with his focus. I mean, he was, he got ready. I mean, he wrestled, hey, Kemmer, go wrestle your match. Don't worry about DeSanto. Don't worry about Marinelli. That's not what you say. You say, go wrestle your match. Hey, wrestle your match. Beaten hand, stud. Scott, last one. Yeah. What does this mean for you personally? I mean, Penn State's been kind of the dominant program the last 70 years. Now you are, you've won this duel. Personally, uh, I mean, I look at it and I, I was like trying to figure out the score and I thought it was five to five, but it's six to four in matches and we beat them by two points. So we gave up 11 points in two matches. So they're nipping and, and, and you can't crown us right now 
So what is this? I mean, it doesn't mean a lot that, oh, we're there and we've arrived. It means we've taken a step and we overcame not some adversity tonight. We overcame a lot of adversity. And our guys showed, you know, what they could do when that arena was, was quiet with 16,000 people in it with concern on DeSanto, with, you know, the 141-pound match. And then what did Lugo do? He goes out there, gets the first score. He didn't, he didn't tighten up, and that, that match didn't go all the way to the end. I mean, he got that first score, and I, I think, his, was he 7-0? What was his score? 6-1? Who was 7-0? Cassie Oakley. Yeah, 7-0, that last match. Anyway, hey, thanks. Rock and roll. Hey, those fans, those fans, I love it. I love it. Go Hawks.